What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew to do the crew review for Diablo 4. And obviously, this is a very hyped game. It came out really not that really a week ago. And I, since then, people have been extremely excited to finally get back into Diablo. And how about this, guys? It doesn't suck ass. I mean, at the end of the day, Diablo has had a reputation of being kind of crappy for relatively a decade, to be honest with you. And especially with Diablo Immortals being the money grab in which it was, people were uneasy whether or not Diablo 4 would actually drop and be effective and be actually be for the fans. So we actually all played it on stream. We played it quite a lot, multiple different hours uh, playing the game as a group. Noobs. And we are noobs to Diablos. This is the first Diablo noobs. play we've all played before. And we formed the Fellowship of the Douches. And uh, we obviously have done a lot of missions here together, but I kind of want to get the good, the bad, and I want to have in our final verdicts, we're going to say whether you should buy this now, later, not at all, as well as our rating. And do you think that this is a game of the year contender? So let's start off with the good. And I was, when I think about the good, I, I think the kind of the mixture of classes I thought was a great thing. And the, just the basic gameplay and story all kind of melded well. I feel like they didn't necessarily have any major issues amongst the big three things. I feel like when you think about customizations, people always say, hey, you know, do, do you give players a choice of different classes that they can pick from? And they're all viable options. And I feel like they all relatively were. I mean, so, sure, some of them might be way stronger than others. Um, I, I was uh, Bratos, which is Kratos' dumb cousin in the in the Brawler or Barbarian. And and I thought he was pretty damn good with some of the movesets that he has. Um, and obviously, the, the gameplay is pretty straightforward. A lot of cool abilities you can use for each character based on what I've seen so far. And I think the story has a really cool, like, it's just a similar themes of Diablo, like, like fighting off against another, you know, kind of demon that is trying to take over. And it's up to you guys to kind of gather enough support, try to find out what their next goal is and then take them down. I mean, that's the overall kind of basic premise, obviously a lot more intertwining side piecing and, and side stories there, but the basic trio of things that I felt are really important for any sort of game like Diablo the the custom the the classes the gameplay the story all kind of hit the right way i mean i think overall they did a good job here but let's go to legilicule next what do you think was the good yeah i mean you hit on some of it but I, the content to me is the big thing right and i felt like there was a lot of it it was uh, flush with content now they do do seasons so this does kind of feel like it's a live service thing that they're going to be adding content but the base game gave you a lot the map was large the main story depending on how much of a veteran you are and we were noobs but it's about 18 to 28 hours of the main storyline and with the dungeons the side stories the live events you can get up to 80 hours so there's a lot there in this game and there's also a large amount of armor large amount of uh, weapons that you can use and it's a vast skill tree that you can get different groupings and and for me personally i was a sorcerer and i had experience with a necromancer um and both of them felt pretty good so i do know there is some level scaling issues between the different classes which is not the greatest but i tell you what content wise it was really nice and graphics i give them for an over the top which again i'm not a huge uh, fan of but this was a it, it was a dark gory horror like game and, and that felt the vibe with the graphics it, it, you know i know diablo 3 had a little bit more cartoonish feel this one felt a little bit more real um with diablo 4 so really good job on that on those aspects hockey what did you feel like was a good thing here yeah so i think um you know the ability to play with friends is, is really a, a strong suit with this game very very fun when you're playing with a group of people very fun to combine your move sets i mean langella kill was talking about the skill tree i mean so many unique and different moves and if you kind of learn what the other uh person's move set is you can kind of really really do a really well job uh defeating any big boss when you're combining your move sets and as well uh langella kill and talk about the content. I mean, there's so much to do in this game. You'll be on a main mission and then you'll pass by a dungeon that you haven't done before and you'll just go, hey guys, you wanna do this dungeon? And that dungeon will end up taking you 30 minutes. <laughs> and now you're confused when you come out of the dungeon. Do I do more side missions? Do I do the main mission? I mean, there's a ton to do, uh, but really if you're playing with friends, this can, uh, this can be a time burner. You'll throw three hours, four hours back real quick, no problem. Yeah, and so with the good, we need to now talk about the bad. And uh, and when I'm thinking about the bad for me, I mean, other than the 
the Garbo servers that we all, I mean, we haven't had experiences as bad as some other people have. I mean, the servers literally had kicked people from games and they lost their entire save. Um, I think I saw stories of people that were playing on hardcore, on hardcore mode, uh, mode, which basically you die, you lose everything, you start from scratch again. And they were basically playing the game. They got disconnected from the server and got killed. And then they had to restart their entire experience. I mean, I can't even fathom if that happened to me, how, how frustrated I would be. But other, other than the servers, which there are kind of a continue, uh, continued process to try to fix. I feel like the game, definitely the classes, the, as much as I like them, the downside is, is that you, certain classes you really can't play alone. Like there, there are certain classes that if you played by yourself, I can't even fathom how difficult the game would be if you were playing by yourself. I mean, I mean, I, I know us three together being noobs and everything like, yeah, we we have are all experienced gamers. Like we could pick up the game and learn how to play it and be pretty good. But I, I we still have some difficulty against certain bosses and certain groups like I can't imagine playing alone where, you know, if you're an experienced player, I mean, maybe you know the ins and outs, but for us, it's like, damn, any one of us played by ourselves in these scenarios, we would get clapped. And I feel like that was something that I felt as a negative. Maybe it's because it's like the whole get good culture is going to, people are going to tell me to get good. But like yeah. at the end of the day, like, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, if you want newer people like us to jump into Diablo and, and be able to enjoy it more like yeah you know if, if we're all on the online together that it's a great time but imagine one of us playing by ourselves we might get really frustrated at what we're trying to do so um i want to see kind of whether they make adjustments to that with difficulty maybe decreasing it uh based on how many people in your party um maybe what like increasing it more for more people in your party decreasing it if you're by yourself whatever it may be i feel like that little thing could definitely help the game um be better in the future for more people um, Haki, what was something that you did not like or you thought was bad? Yeah, so I'm pretty much right with you. I mean, the only downfall for the game for me, and I mean, this is just my opinion. I know um, Diablo has a pretty strong fan base, and I know people play it alone, but I couldn't last more than an hour. I did it in the beta, played alone, and I played a little, a little bit alone uh, with the real game as well. Uh, like I said, couldn't last an hour. Uh, it just got a little boring to me. The main focus for me is, is playing with people. So um, that's the one downfall. It gets a little boring for me after about an hour or so. I, I start to fall asleep at the at the hands of the wheel. So that's pretty much the only bad thing. Yeah, so Angelica, what did you feel like was the bad here? Yeah, I got two of them. And, and the first one is kind of similar to what, what you guys are talking about. And that's leveling up and the scaling of enemies. And, and in this game, enemies are scaled based on your level. So when you're in a group of party, depending on who's the lowest level or who's the highest level. And we all played it, we are all at a similar level, so it didn't affect us as much, but the enemies are gonna be at scale based on your party. And it just feels like it, it weakens the impact of you leveling up and getting these new abilities and using these different abilities. It just feels like you don't get that same impact um, when you do, when you're facing these giant hordes, everything kind of feels the same. And so that's the only issue I had on the leveling up side. And I know people have been going back and forth on what's the right way to handle it. But to me, it just feels like sometimes you're leveling up and starting a new ability, at least for some of these classes. And it just feels like you didn't level up. Like there was no, no impact you're feeling by leveling up there. And so that's one thing that I did think bother. And I'm going to be, I've been very consistent. Anyone who follows Mars Van Gaming, I'm going to rag on the store. I mean, they're selling cosmetics for thirty dollars mm -hmm. on the pop. And uh, listen, I know all the I'm hearing all the the fanboys of Diablo come in and say, well, they're cosmetics; they don't impact the game. There is no cosmetic on this planet that is worth thirty dollars in game. There is none. And I ragged on Halo for it. You rag on Valorant for it. You rag on all these other games. This is a seventy dollar game. It's a seventy dollar game, and they're charging you thirty dollars plus for cosmetic armor. I mean, that is asinine. I don't care how, you know, that it's all, it doesn't impact the game. That's only the start, right? We don't even know what these seasons are going to bring. But Blizzard has had, a, has had a long history, especially with Diablo, to be money grubbing. And this is an ugly sign of it, is that store. Yeah, and I do agree with you there. I'm, uh, the store is just all another beast. But with that being said, let's jump into our final verdict. So we're going to answer the by now, later or not at all, as well as our ratings. And do we think this is a game of the year contender? And so I'll start off with mine. I feel like this is definitely a buy now game. I feel like they did a great job. At least I know the, you know, when playing the beta, you saw the servers were horrifyingly bad. And yeah, there have been some 
slight issues with the servers. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely, definitely been a lot better since the beta. Um, and I feel like overall, it's been a pretty much very enjoyable experience. I haven't had a bad night playing Diablo with, with the crew. Um, and maybe you could play by yourself, depending on what type of player you are. Maybe you like to rather play by yourself, but I feel like this was a great experience and there's a lot to do in this game. If you want a game that takes up a lot of time, other than Tears of the Kingdom, this is a great game to play. Um, and my final rating, I'd probably give this roughly like an 8.7. I feel like this is kind of that it's a great game. It's matching games that, you know, we're also top doing very well this year. As well, uh, as well as other games that were ranked pretty well, um, I think there are some issues like like customizations. There's too much stuff that are too similar for me. I feel like armors and weapons, like there's nothing clear like, oh, damn, I got to rock this weapon because they all kind of look the same in a certain way. I think the armors are, are a little bit better, but the, the weapons themselves are kind of are identical <laughs> in a lot of ways. It's just different colors or different uh, damage uh, rankings, but um, little things like that definitely downgraded. But the overall gameplay experience, the... Yeah, playing with friends the story the all things were all pretty pretty good in my my opinion so 8.7 and i think it's a game of your contender i think that it honestly is if you're thinking about this year of games um obviously tears of the kingdom is definitely going to be a game of your contender it might even be a shoe in for winner um but you have games like obviously we i really liked I, I rush i really enjoyed that game quite a lot diablo 4 is definitely a game that i would put on the radar as being a very you know top tier game resident evil full remake well even though i'm against remakes being a game of the year contender probably will be one of them um but i mean if you really think about it how many other games like it's really about to final fantasy 16 spider-man starfield Spider are yeah. the only three remaining and and honestly i don't if, if all three of those games make it i could definitely see one of the other ones i mentioned get kicked off and i think it would be whether Hi-Fi Rush or Resident Evil Remake get kicked off rather than Diablo. I feel like... How about Hogwarts? There's another Ho stiff competition. Hogwarts is issue. another one, yeah. yeah, that it might be there, but um, I think Hogwarts, a lot of people have not really talked about Hogwarts. Like, it kind of, like, died out, like, really quickly. Like, usually you get a good vibe of a Game of Year contender or how, you know, shoe-in they are when they are talked about for a long period. Like, Elden Ring kind of had that mantra, like, yes, it dropped during, what, March, and then it was still talked about highly in November. Like it was people mad and people were playing and the sales were go keep going up. Like as much as I, I played Hogwarts, had a review of it. You can check that out up here. Um, I I enjoyed the game. I had a lot of fun playing it, but not a lot of people are playing it as much as they used to. Um, I feel like they, they lost the excitement. So they could be, right? I'm not saying you can't, uh, but I feel like Diablo 4 might be that that sneak jump in uh, of that, that, what, five, six that they add in every year. So. I could definitely see it, but Legelico, what do you, what, what was your final verdict? What do you, would you say by now, later, not at all? And give me what your rating is for this game. Now, listen, I was a little harsh on the bed, but I still think this was a really, really good game. I have it a nine flat out of 10. Um, great game, but to me, it, there's a couple things that separate it from being elite. I talk about the content in it, the gameplay loop, playing with friends is, all, is a lot of fun. And the graphics they did was a definitely you know, match the horror and kind of that demon vibe that they were going for. So all that was good. The bad, kind of like you said, the leveling up, the scaling, some of the weapon, you know, the redundant weapons slash armors is a problem. And the store is greedy. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. So I am going to knock it for that. But a 9 out of 10 by now. And I do believe this is a game of the year contender. It's very stiff competition and things can change. But I do think at the end of the day, it will be in the final six. And Hockey, what is your final verdict on Diablo 4? Yeah, so I'm with you guys. I'm, I'm by now. Um, I have it a little bit lower than you guys. I have it at an 8.5, and the only reason is just, in my opinion, um, a game's not going to be an amazing or, or an outstanding game if I can't play it uh, for more than an hour or two at a time by myself. Uh, but that is the strong suit, is playing with your friends, playing with family. So if you have... Uh, any friends or family that want to give Diablo a try, I would definitely recommend it. This is coming from someone who, uh, you know, is, was pretty much strictly a shooter guy. And then I got into Elden Ring and I'm starting to get into other games. I gave Diablo a try. I really like it. It was a good game, but I'm going to get it at an 8.5. I think it is going to be uh, a game of the year contender, but I do not think that it will um, be even in the top three. Uh, I think it'll be kind of kind of on the lower half of that. I think it's going to be either be, you know, Tears of the Kingdom or, uh, you know, 
uh, you got uh, Starfield as well. So uh, good game though. Yeah, well that's gonna be it for a review for Diablo 4. What do you think about Diablo 4? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Mars Man signing off. Peace out, guys.